hear me, go ahead and leave me a comment below and let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm coming to you from my home studio in North Central Florida where it was 29 degrees this morning. A lot of people don't believe that it gets that cold here in Florida, but I'm looking at my banana trees and they are dead. Uh, at least the tops are. They'll come back in the spring. But yes, everything, a bunch of stuff froze out here. There was frost this morning and it's still quite chilly. So I'm here with my little Santa hat and we're going to be making another one of these uh, in a minute doing a demo. This is a new tutorial that I posted up on my YouTube channel yesterday for the Santa hat and I crank it out on a knitting machine. But I wanted to show you some other projects that I've finished that I've been making and that I've been working on before we jump into that. All right. Hey, Maureen. Hey, Joyce. Oh, we have a lot of people tuning in here. Some from Florida, some from California. Hey, Sheila. Hi, Carla. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Barb, tuning in from California. So let me show you what I've been working on. And I know some of you are going to ask. The shirt I'm wearing uh, is the Jali Yoko pattern. This is actually a free PDF download. We made this last year in one of my garment sewing retreats. It's a turtleneck top. Super cute. You can leave it up, fold it down. And uh, long sleeve, super simple. You can see that it's a drop sleeve pattern. Okay? And long sleeve, super comfy and warm. So for this time of year, it is perfect. Hi, Janice. Thank you. She says, I look so pretty. Just threw some lipstick on and a Santa hat. My hair is all bundled up under here. But you can see, we wanted to uh, make Santa hats for everybody in my house this year so we can see about taking some holiday pictures. Running a little late, but we'll still make it. So we have three made up so far, and I thought, well, I need to make a fourth one, so I might as well make it on Whip Wednesday. So here are some other ones that we've cranked out. Some are a little bit shorter for the kids, longer for us, and so we'll talk a little bit about that as I go. Plus, if you can't watch the whole Whip Wednesday today, or you kind of want to sit down and take out all your supplies at, at a later date, then I do have a step-by-step -step edited full video tutorial on how to make this project, okay? So let's go ahead and give me the over-the-shoulder camera shot. I'm going to share with you some projects that I have been working on and making. Okay, picture in picture is back. Let me know if you like the picture in picture in the comments below, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, we love to hear it. So this is another recent tutorial that I posted. This is for my basic, let me see if I have the other one here. Oh, I do have it. Let me grab it. So years ago, I think almost eight years ago now, I posted a free PDF uh, pattern download and a video tutorial for my fleece hat with ear flaps. This has always been a huge hit over the years. It is a free PDF, but I'll just take a moment to remind y'all, you need to buy it for $0 in our online shop, okay? So... <clears throat> The video tutorial for this has all the information. You can also just do a search for Crafty Gemini fleece hat with ear flaps. It'll pop right up for you, whether it's the blog post or the actual product in the shop page. So this is what the basic one looks like. And I have the pattern pieces included for you uh, for child and adult sizes. Okay. Now, in more recent years, over on uh, Designs by Juju's Facebook page, that's an embroidery design company. People have been using her little peeker designs. They're like little animals that peek like this over the top edge of something. First of all, they were designed, I think they're super popular with the hooded towels that a lot of people are making. And so you can add that there, but you can see that the my fleece hat pattern is like the perfect foundation for these as well. And so I made this one, then I made another one uh, in the step-by-step -step video tutorial that's already on my YouTube channel. My son is currently wearing it. His big 11-year-old head is too uh, big for the child sizes, but he don't care. He just like snugs it on. So the adult size is the one that we need to make for him next. And then I show you basically how to hack it, how to prep it for the machine embroidery design. It's an applique design. And then we add like the fringe pom-pom on the top. So I walk you through all the steps. Now, this fabric here, a lot of people have been asking me about this. This is actually Liverpool. So if you are in my Helene cardigan class or you tuned in last year when we did like the Nicole tops and stuff like that. And it's a double knit, a double knit stretch. It's a textured print, you know, textured fabric. It's a solid, but textured like that. A lot of people have been asking me, Hey, what fabric did you use for this yellow part for the Fox here? And also for the little teddy bear one that I made. And that's what that is. So if you have scraps left over from your Helene cardigan, or we still have actually Liverpool fabric that we've used uh, to make the scrunchies, the Helene cardigan, and we sell it by the half yard. You don't need, I mean, you can crank out a ton of these hats with the same textured main fabric if you use that Liverpool. And you can find, it's Liverpool Bullet. You can just type in Crafty Gemini Bullet Fabric and it'll pop right up for you. Next up, 
Some of you have been following me on uh, Instagram and Facebook where I've been sharing these little knitted slippers that I was working on. They're a little bit too big for me just because they stretch so much. It's a superwash merino wool. So I made these for my husband and you can see how much they stretch. His foot is longer and wider than mine. But this was just a free PDF that I downloaded off of Ravelry. So if you're on Ravelry and you crochet and knit, you can find it under simple garter stitch slippers. Okay. And you'll find these there, but this is a yarn that I hand dyed last year. Isn't that pretty? I'm really enjoying working with like hand dyed yarns. And so I just thought I would put a, another hat that I made maybe two years ago. And this was another skein of yarn that I hand dyed. So if you're into knitting or crochet and you're interested maybe on more projects or kits and things like that with my hand dyed yarn, let me know in the comments below because that's definitely uh, something that I'm enjoying quite much these days. And I thought it would be fun to design some projects and maybe make some kits with like uniquely hand dyed yarns. That would be kind of fun. But anyways, look how pretty these turned out. Super cute and comfy, and it's a quite a simple beginner project. These aren't perfect by any means, and I think I made this one a little bit longer. Uh, he won't notice. Um, now that I told him, he will, but that's that. Now, let's jump into Santa hats. These are the ones I need to make one more, like I said, so that everybody in my house has one. So I'm going to grab my supplies and we'll talk a little bit about these machines. That way, if y'all are asking questions and stuff, I can try to answer them. I'm not an expert on this. We got these machines early this summer. And so we've just, we played around with it back then. And then we've just been dabbling in it little by little. Carla Lisa says the hack for the fleece hat pattern blew her mind. Isn't it super fun? I think these are a lot of fun and you can keep like, you can add the embroidered um, design here, but still keep the top the same, you know, so you can change it up and, and customize it. Uh, let's see. Susan is asking, what is the height of that design? I'm not sure um, which design you're talking about since I'm just now seeing the, the question. Ooh, Janice says, yes, on the kits with the hand dyed yarn. All right, cool. Kits, Crafty Ferret Mama says, kits, yes. All right, great. Now, speaking of kits with yarn, uh, the, I don't even have it here. Let me grab one real quick. Uh, for the crochet kits, Y'all, this was another tutorial that I did recently for my, do, 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 what did I call this? The ribbed crochet uh, washcloth or dishcloth. Now we sold kits on these and we sold out. If you haven't noticed on our website, we added a new feature where if you're trying to purchase a product that is sold out, underneath where it says out of stock, it will say join the wait list. And so you can uh, click there to add yourself to the wait list. So when we restock it, our system will automatically send you an email saying, hey, it's restocked. So if you come across anything that you've been wanting to buy on the site and you see that we're sold out, go ahead and add yourself to the wait list there so that when we do restock it, you'll be the first to know and you don't have to worry about missing out on it on an email that maybe you didn't check or you know one of these live events. But anyways, if you're into crochet washcloths, check this out. And if you want a knitted washcloth, again, just do a quick Google search, Crafty Gemini knitted washcloth. Crafty Gemini, crochet washcloth, and my tutorials will pop right up. They, I have one for each right now, and they both include free PDF downloads. So that's something else that y'all can check out. Great for the holidays. All right, let's see. Julianne is asking, what's a good embroidery machine to get? So there are so many. One that I really loved, um, and I did some video tutorials on it in the past, was the Brother PE770. I believe Brother is not making that one no more, and the PE800 has replaced it. So that's a great entry level machine because it's gonna be like the most budget friendly, but still allow you the biggest room to embroider. A lot of times you can get, um, like a more inexpensive entry level embroidery machine, but you'll be limited to a four by four hoop size. And I used to have that maybe 12 years ago and I sold it, traded it in, you know, for a different machine because you couldn't really, you know, I couldn't uh, stitch out anything bigger than that. And you were limited. It was just like on the corner of a little burp cloth, on the corner of a little something, making a little rag quilt. Like I didn't have any options to make them bigger. And so if you're starting off, I would definitely recommend you get a machine with at least a five by seven inch uh, hoop. Uh, size capability, right? The four by four and the five by seven. So the designs that I use on the peakers here um, were the design when I bought them off of a designs by juju.com. It was the design for the five by seven hoop. So she has them, you know, like I say you buy the set of those patterns. It's like a bear, a fox girl, fox boy, like all these different, and they come in sets. It's not like one design you're buying. I don't know, 10, 12. There's like a big group of them in there. And then you pick the one you want. Is it for four by four, five by seven, whatever, seven by 12. I don't know what all the sizes are, but you can choose from there. So I would say 
Um, the best bang for your buck is going to be a budget friendly machine, probably the Brother PE 800 um, that allows you to do the five, five by seven. OK, so let's see. Um, <laughs> John says this video is awesome with you in the bubble and the camera on the table. This is excellent. And hey, for the kids making breakfast. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah, so I have heard about that. So the question is, somebody has heard about people having this machine and the counter not acting right. So I did read that on the internet as well. So I've been trying to keep track of it since I'm standing here manually doing it. So far, this has worked fine for me. I haven't had a problem. Um, but obviously, you know, I mean, it's a plastic machine. This is not something that you can think is going to last forever and ever. But there are different Facebook groups that you can join for the machines. Um, people showing you how to, you know, take a Phillips screwdriver, take it apart, clean it, put it back. Some people uh, don't like to do that because they say after they open it and clean it, it never goes back to working the same. So just be mindful of the money that you're putting into it. But I mean, look at it. It's like a plastic machine. It's kind of fun. It's great craft to do with kids, but this is nothing like the circular sock knitting machine that I have that's all metal, handcrafted, made in the U.S. and costs over $2,000, right? This, I paid $49, $45, I think, this summer for it, but because they're almost sold out everywhere, I have a link in the video for the tutorial for the Santa hats, and um, when I look, they're selling for like 100 bucks, and some people are selling them on eBay for like 125 so I don't know that I would pay that much, but it is super fun. I mean, 100 bucks I would pay, but I mean, I got it for 40 something so that tells you. I mean, it's just, you know. A plastic machine. Anyways, the one that we're going to make the Santa hat on, these adult sizes, that also fits kids, right? And you can adjust the tension. We'll talk a little bit more about that now when I start. I'll grab my yarn here. But I just wanted to show you another one that we have also. This is kind of the one, one of the popular brands, Centro. This one on mine says Jam It. They also say Santro. There's like different branding. It's the exact same machine. Like, let's be real. Um, the ones that are different are the Addy machines, and those are more expensive. They say they're better quality and stuff. I don't have one of those, so I don't know. But these are the ones that I got. This one, look how cute. A little one. This one only has, I believe it's 22 needles, 22 pins. Yep. So this is 22 and this is 48. Okay. So say you made a hat on this, you could still make a hat, but it's going to be more for like a doll size, a newborn or a little baby. So when well, we got this one first back in May, I think May or June. And uh, the kids and I were like, oh, let's try it. Let's make some scarves or see how you can make hats. And so I'll show you some samples. So when you first start off, whether it's the little one or the big machine, this is what it's going to look like until you get this tension down. Do you see this? How like the stitches are still there, but some are way looser, way tighter than others. That's not cute, you know? So you'll definitely have to kind of use up some of your yarn. And this is the yarn that the machine came with. It comes with like really low quality acrylic yarn that's not even that great. Like it doesn't give me consistent tension. So I had to play around with it until I got something more that looked like this. And we are just testing it out and practicing. But you can see the difference, right? And this is on the same size machine, so this is how um, you can figure the tension, right? The looser the tension, the more open and loose the fabric is going to be. This is like gauge. When we talk about crochet or knitting, same thing. So this is a looser gauge and a very inconsistent one, and this is a tighter gauge. So same 22 pins or needles on the machine, but you can see that this one is narrower because the tension is tighter, right? And this is a tension assembly, and this is identical. You can see that even though they're two different brands... The tension assembly on these guys is identical and it just has like three little uh, three little slots with a hole The smaller one is obviously going to apply the most tension to the yarn So that's a higher tension the one in the middle is medium and the biggest little opening there is going to be the looser tension I've seen that some people just like to tension it in their hands I'm not about that life. So I just had to fin you know, figure out with the yarn that I was using what the machine liked All right, and you can make scarves hats. I've seen people make fingerless mitts like all kind of cool stuff so I'm going to start here by casting on, and I'm going to start with the red yarn. Now, the yarn that I'm using, I've linked to it in the blog post for this project, in the video tutorial, all that. It's by Knit Picks, super affordable. It's a craft type of yarn. I'm trying to find the end tail. Here we go. Um, it's a craft type yarn. It's 100% acrylic, but the machine seems to like it. I've seen horror stories online of people where, like, their machine does not like this yarn or that yarn or this yarn or that yarn. So you want to play around with it. I just cranked around to find uh, the last needle here, pin, whatever you want to call it. I have a sock knitting machine, so I call them needles. But I've seen online, like for these machines, people call them pins. So I'm always going back and forth between the two. Um, Lydia says you can make socks. Carla says, could that be socks? Absolutely. So the only thing is that like if you're making the smaller one, wouldn't that be cute to be a sock? 
I mean, you would probably, um, to have like the most clean finish on the sock, I would probably like cast off and then do a toe like by hand and, and um, knit in by hand the toes and the heel, right? And then the ribbing for the cuff. But I mean, these, obviously this is a thicker weight yarn than you typically would use for real socks. Like on my sock knitting machine, and one of these days I'm gonna take it out and maybe do a Whip Wednesday on that. Actually, I have some samples because when I first got the machine, I played around a ton. So let me grab a couple of these guys. This is cool because I get to show you, they're not perfect. I mean, they're not even close to being perfect, <laughs> but they're still practice. So this is proper sock weight yarn and samples that I cranked out on my, um, like a real metal all made, you know, a circular sock knitting machine. And this was when I was learning how to not even by hand, like on the machine. And it's a circular machine like that, but it's smaller and it's more heavy duty. I can crank the toes and the heels on the same machine. So a lot of people that get the sock knitting machine will just do this. And you've probably seen this. People even sell them on Etsy where like you send them the yarn skein and they will crank you a tube. This is what cranking a tube is. They put the whole skein of yarn on their machine and they just crank the tube. So you get a full stockinette stitch tube and you can see what this is at the beginning and end. On that sock machine, we start off with waist yarn, which is just scrap yarn. It's just basically holding these live stitches, okay? And then on the other end, also scrap yarn. Okay. So you would go in here, basically, you know, figure the halfway point, how long you wanted the socks, then pick up stitches for one, um, knit the toe, the heel, the cuff, and then you'd have two socks, right? So the, the bulk of the sock body is done on the machine by cranking the tube. So that's an option. This was just a, a cake of ombre yarn that I had. Uh, in my stash. So I was, this was just playing around, making sure I didn't have any tension issues. This is a little bit loose of a tension in sock terms. So it's a little bit big. And I did this, I think on a 72 needle thing. I'm not sure. I can't remember now, but I have a little notebook full of notes because this, that machine has one heck of a, a learning curve y'all. So here's another one where I was cranking. This is like a hung hem on it. And then I cranked, uh, you know, a little bit for like the leg part of the sock. And then I was working a heel in here. You see how I have a hole here. This is why you have to make these practice ones because there's certain techniques and things that you can do that will give you a nice clean finish there. So you don't end up with those holes. And then the foot, you know, this was one where I managed to do both and it goes like this. So it's a little tiny hung hem. This is a shorty sock. This is the heel that I worked in and it looks pretty good. I have a little bit of a hole there. And then this is the foot and then this is the toe. So what you're seeing here extra, this lime green bit is the scrap yarn. So if we move that out of the way, you can see the last row of pink stitches to where this darker green stitches are. That needs to get joined to this. I would get rid of this and that is what would close the sock. Do you see that? And then that's the toe. So it's super fun. I mean, it's like I said, definitely a learning curve. Here's another one. This is the first one that I did trying to figure out how to um, do the heel on that machine. But you can see the fabric and the yarn used is absolutely different. This is a four worsted weight uh, yarn, and this is a one fingering weight sock yarn. So yeah, so that's just some of those things. But you could make socks. That's all that to say. You could make socks on these machines. They would just be more like comfy lounge around slipper type of socks. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah. If you're enjoying the whip Wednesdays, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Thanks Genevieve for the shout out. Drinking my tea here. Now let's start. So I'm working with knit picks, Brava yarn. It's hundred percent acrylic. You don't have to use this yarn. There's a lot of groups on Facebook where you can see exactly what people are using, what yarns work well. This, I mean, right off the bat, I know people were trying tons of yarn until they found one that worked. We had this in our stash. I tried it. I was like, boom, it's perfect. Let me get some more. All right. So I'm going to start off with a tail and we just throw it to the inside and whoops, let me go around the first one. And so we're casting on, I'm going in front of one needle and can y'all see that here uh, in front of one needle and behind the next. And you have to make sure that you're alternating. Otherwise you're not going to set yourself up for success. This first cast on round needs to be done exactly. So you'll just start off slow. And notice what I'm doing is that I'm cranking it. Let me try to get you on the shot there. I'm cranking it little by little because as I crank, I need this to approach this way so that I can, you know, do what I need to do to the next one in front. Whoop. Let me see. That one went under, that one behind, this one under. Okay, there we go. And just keep a little tension on the yarn in your hand so it doesn't get too loose and then slip either in front or behind 
instead of where it needs to be. And I'm over here talking, but let's hope I'm doing this right and I didn't miss one. Because I want to get through at least some rounds. Y'all just going to see me here cranking and cranking while we're talking. All right, so there, the white one on this machine is the last needle. So I know when the white one comes up, I've gone all the way around. So now I'm going to slip it in here and through the thread guide. And then I, for this yarn and for worsted weight, which I've done again, because I did another hat. I'm trying to see if I have it here. A different hat like with a different yarn to show y'all that was worsted weight let me just take a quick peek in my stash I think one of the kids probably took it it has been chillier here so but I, I did it out of another worsted weight but like a fuzzier kind of yarn and as long as I maintained it in the middle tension here it didn't give me any problems and I I was playing around with it thinking oh it's gonna cause me some trouble because it's like Kind of like a puffier, more open strand than just this basic acrylic worsted, but it worked fine. All right, so another thing I'll say, we want this to be on T down here. T is for tubular cranking, like tubular project, and P is for panel. So there have been people making uh, on the P setting, on the panel setting, they make like these long strips of just stockinette, you know, just plain knit fabric, and then they join them together. They're making blankets. Some people are making sweaters. I mean, obviously it takes a lot more work. It's not as easy as cranking a hat, but... All I'm saying, you can do it. Then I throw my ball of yarn to the floor, believe it or not. You can also put it in a basket on the floor, but it's because I want to release all this slack so that I'm not adding additional tension versus what I'm feeding it through here. I don't want it to be tight on something and then also have this tension being applied. And then the first, oops, I'm going to reset my um, counter here. I don't count the first cast on one. But for this first one now that we crank, I do. And I'm just watching it, making sure each needle is catching. Okay. Just to double check, make sure everything is cranking good. And after like these first two or three rounds that I go kind of slow, then I start picking up the speed after I see I don't have any drop stitches or anything like that. But in case you do end up with drop stitches, have a crochet hook handy. And then you'll also need a darning needle at the end and then something to cut the yarn with. But I mean, I've, we've made four hats already. We did make another Santa hat, but it was for a friend's daughter. So she um, helped us crank it. And so now we can start kind of, you know, picking up the pace a little bit. And so far our counter shows legit three rounds. Now, when it starts to approach here, you see, I always keep an eye on the yarn. So stop it, make sure it's loose as it approaches here. Sometimes you'll find that it'll wrap itself here. And although it might not be in another opening, that's still applying additional tension. So just keep an eye on it and make sure it's exactly where you want it to be. And now the machine itself has like little suction cups on the legs. It doesn't stick obviously to the green cutting mat. That's why you see my hand here, just holding it down. And I did order, there's, um, instead of just manually sitting here and cranking it, there have been some people with 3D printers who have printed like a cap that goes on the handle here and you can hook up not a power drill but a power screwdriver and you just and the machine cranks and cranks and cranks. I did go ahead and order one of those off of Etsy and I think I got the shipping notification yesterday that it shipped. So as soon as I get that, I'll be sure to do some type of a video and, and show y'all how it works. So we're at seven and now we just need to sit here and crank 65 more rounds. And I'm just watching this. Whoop. You see, I felt it get like a little bit of a tug because all the slack I had pulled, I had already cranked it into the project. Oh, Maureen says, you always provide so much information, not just in the tutorials, but also where to find things. Well, I'm glad to help, Maureen. Thank you. Crafty Ferret is asking, is the yarn Brava? It is. And actually, I've seen a few different Brava yarns. This is Brava by Knit Picks. So it's not one that has like the Brava brand on it. I don't know. I feel like I saw that recently on the internet. It's not. It's Brava from Knit Picks. And so in the video tutorial for this, I have an affiliate link for um, Knit Picks. So if you want to buy it from there, that would be awesome. All right. Oh, they said they can't really see it right there. Okay. So I'm going to keep cranking. Carla says the machine looks like so much fun. She just ordered hers on Amazon. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I mean, of course, it's a plastic machine, y'all. And, and this is what I find that like people will make like 50 hats on here and then be complaining like, why do I see pieces of shaved plastic? It's falling apart. It's like this machine is not like a commercial um, knitting machine. OK, this thing is not going to hold up that long. But anyway. 
Hi, Wendy, tuning in from Australia. It's probably nighttime over there. Okay, so can you see how the fabric that we're creating is starting to look? Don't mind it too much if you see it and then you're like, oh no, it doesn't really look like that fabric. It's going to look different when you take it off and kind of let it settle for a little bit. I'm already to almost 20 rounds. So it's just a matter of like stopping, pulling the yarn off of the thing. And these yarn balls come in like the regular balls. So they're not like out of a cake where if I were to have bought a cake, I think I would just um, cast on from the center and then I would just crank. And that way I don't have to keep pulling slack from here because, you know, from a center pull ball, it um, just comes out versus the ball tossing side to side and around. And... Let me just scoot this there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helps and y'all can see it going round and round and round and round and round. Oh my goodness, Wendy says it's 525. She just woke up. 525 a.m. So it's 525 a.m. tomorrow. Goodness gracious. All right. Ooh. Excuse me, Jan's Creation says she has the one that Michael sells, but she hasn't used it because there's no, and she says there's no counter on that one. So I have, um, <coughs> excuse me, some people have mentioned that. They say I have the, what do they say, Loops and Looms or something like that, like the, the Michael's brand. If you have one of these in a box, try it. Just grab a little ball of scrap, you know, and just work on it a little bit. Determining the size. Hey, Darlena, she's asking if uh, the tension determines the size. So it can, right? Uh, you can use the same yarn and put the yarn through the different tension things here. And it's going to be like on the smallest one, it's going to be the smallest size. In the middle one, it'll be like the size that I'm making if you're using the same weight yarn. And then um, if you put in the in the bigger tension opening, it will be bigger. So that is all, you know, when we're talking about gauge and knitting and crochet, the type of fabric that you create is all is going to determine the size, right? So like if you're knitting a sweater and you're using a needle two sizes bigger than what the designer intended or you just knit super loosely, it's going to fit you bigger than it was intended to, even though, say, you chose your right size. So, yes, gauge absolutely affects the sizing, which is cool, too, right? So like say you're making this. Um, I probably, now that I think about it, I probably should have done this one on the looser tension for my husband because he has a lot of hair, it's super long, and his head is bigger than mine. But that's that's one thing that you can use, right? The same way that we would make garments and say, well, I need to make a size bigger and I want it to be loose on me versus where the pattern was designed to be a little bit snug, you can use fabric that has more stretch in it so that you can get more room in there. So it's the same thing. Um, that same idea of like what the fabric is that you're using. In the case of crochet, knitting by hand or knitting by machine, we're making the fabric. So if you make a tighter fabric, it will be smaller. And if you make a looser fabric, it will be more open and airy and bigger. So Carrie's asking, how tiny can you go infant size? On this one, I have not cranked one out yet with the uh, small, like with the tightest tension in, in this same style. Because remember, although this may be bigger for one layer, I make them two layers. So whenever you add a lining, especially when it's just as bulky as the outer fabric, it's going to be smaller in here, right? But the fabric stretches just enough, so you can see that. So for a kid, you can make it even just shorter so that they can fold up the brim and that way it won't fit tight or loose. Even if it's done in this same size, you're just going to be adjusting the height of it because you want it to be a little bit loose. I mean, it's quite bulky because there's two layers in here and that fabric, you know, the fabric that we're creating, it's two layers of worsted weight yarn. It's thick. So that's eating up some of the size on the inside too. But on this one, if you use a looser yarn, I would not say, like, if you want to make a child size, like a kid that's like three or something, I would not do that. I would better do one on the bigger 48 pin one and either play with the tighter tension or just make the rows, um, make less rows, you know, so your panels are not quite as long. All right. Yes, and Elisa's right. She says, also, uh, different machines have different number of needles. That's right. So other brands, you'll see 40 needle instead of 48 so that would be a good one to do for kid sizes even with like a medium tension probably because although you don't have as many needles in here it's not going to be as small as half the size that that little one this one here is just 22 needles okay 
Sherry says, I love the picture in picture. Great. Thank you. I know because it's so hard to like show stuff. And sometimes I like use my hands here or sometimes I want to show you something here and then I forget to show it here. So it helps. Hi, Tia. Bendición, Tia. I got one of my aunts tuning in. What's up? <laughs> it's funny because when I do videos, I never think of people that I actually know, like family or friends watching. And then when somebody's like, oh, I saw you, whatever. I'm like, you watch them? <laughs> Uh, it's like, duh, you're on the internet, but I forget that it's out for the whole world to see, regardless of, of who I think might be watching. It's like, everybody is. Okay, here we go. Tangled mess, because my ball is getting kind of um, thin. So just stop and take a moment to unwind. And of course, I did not account for this happening on my demo. So I'll just keep... I almost want to cut it. I'm not good at this kind of stuff of like dealing with tangled messes. I literally will grab it and just throw it in the trash. And I know that there's groups online where you can send a big ball of just tangled yarn and they'll like, one person will like untangle a big chunk and then they mail it off to the next person in line and they untangle another chunk. I literally get anxiety just from looking at like all this tangled mess. So one thing that you can do if that happens to you is like just cut it the same way that I'll show you how to change over to the white yarn as you crank red. You know, we're going to do 65 rounds. We're almost to 39. So let me stop running my mouth and um, crank some of these out so that at 65 rounds, I can show you how to change out to the white yarn. And that same technique that we'll use to introduce a new color can be done here too. Like if it's too tangled, you can just cut it, get another ball or start on the opposite end and then just reintroduce it and you can join them. It'll pretty much be seamless. Nobody will know. I like having those kinds of options. Otherwise I will scrap the whole project because I just don't feel like detangling. That's kind of how I do things. Uh, Carla's asking, can you do neck scars on this machine? Absolutely. So you can do them a few different ways. Some people have done them like that where it's um, cranked in the tube form and then they cinch up the ends like they sew them up. Instead of cinching it together like we do at the top of the hat, they sew them flat. So you get two layers of just like a flat panel. And those are done on the round, but you can also do them in a flat panel. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm thinking more of different things I want to try. All right, come on. I need 23 more rounds. But it is kind of fun to watch, especially when you watch the fast forwarded videos in my tutorial where it's just like, and you see it like the fabric getting longer and longer. Super fun. Okay. A little bit of a tangled mess. Look at this. Ah! I used to do that to my kids. When they were fussing and fighting when they were younger, I would be like, here, here's a ball of tangled yarn. Sit quietly and untangle it. <laughs> wow! Okay. This is no fun. Okay, so I am going to cut it because I have no patience. One. So... So I'm going to take the tail end that I cut and I'm just going to throw it in the middle and uh, don't judge me y'all. I know some of you are like that. No, it's not even big. I don't care. Chop it. That little bundle can go away. And then I'm going to start here. Reintroduce this one. There, middle tension. And I'm going to pretend it never happens just like that. I'll go back in and secure these the same way that we would a new uh, yarn color, but super quick fix. Because I want to get through this one to show you how I would introduce the white. But you can see, I mean, I haven't had any drop stitches or anything. Let me stop jinxing myself because, of course, now that I say it. And, you know, if it happens like in the middle of the way, like I drop a stitch or something just starts going disastrously wrong down here, I just take it out. We unravel it and just start again because it's not by hand. It's not like you feel like hours and hours have been wasted. It's literal minutes. So I rather instead of trying to, you know, fix something that's if it's one drop stitch, I'll fix it right there. But if it's like catastrophic and the stitch, the kids messed it up and it's just going down, down, down. I'm not bothering with it. They can just start over. 
Nisi's Play says, I hate the tangle in the middle of a skein, so I always wind a ball or a cake. And that's what we call yarn vomit, where you reach inside and you go to find the tail, you know, the loose end from the inside. And when you pull it, this whole nugget of just tangled up yarn comes out. It's the worst. <laughs> Casey says, untangling. The reason for having kids, give them something, LOL. Seriously, talk about, I mean, it's like a puzzle. It's like, sit there, figure it out. All right. 55. Come on, we're almost there. 56. I might have enough. I have a little ball of yarn left down there, so we'll see if we can get to it. And that way, as this gets longer, I'll show you how I kind of bring it up. Now, one thing that I noticed, and I'm just going to tie these. I think y'all can see it. I'm going to tie an overhand knot. On this one, uh, I don't know. There's way too many needles on this. Even if you did the tightest tension, they would be, just be massive. So no, I don't. I would not say um, to do socks on here. Now, some people just tie one overhand so it's not like a super true knot, and then they'll weave in the ends. This is for my family, and um, these people tear things up. So we are going to tie two so that there's an actual knot in there uh, to lock things in place. And then I'm just trimming those tails to like four inches or so, because then at the end I'll go back in and weave those in. But that was where we joined the disaster, de you know, tangled chunk with the rest of it. Now, one thing I was gonna say is that on my real sock knitting machine, we have forks. So like when we're working um, the heels and the toes, there's like these metal forks. It just has like two prongs like that. Some of them have three, you can buy different ones and they have a heavy weight on them. And so we clip it into the fabric here to hold it and weigh it down because as the fabric raises up like this, it more, more easily pops off of the needles and then you end up with drop stitches. And when you're working with that fine sock weight yarn, that's, that's why I say it has a learning curve, that other machine. Um, and so on this one, I was surprised to see that nobody really uses weights, but then when I started digging around the internet, I seen people are putting like clips or clothespins with little weights on them, just something to hold it down. So keep, be mindful of that. If you're working with too loose of a tension where they're barely, the loops of the yarn are barely gripping on, then you may have a lot of, of, uh, drop stitches and that's no good. So think about clipping it, you know, putting some type of a, not heavy weight because you don't want to drag the machine down either, but something else. Okay, 62. We're almost there. 63. <laughs> Julie says she doesn't have patience for the tangles. Her husband takes them out for her. <laughs> all right, 64. Now I'm keeping an eye. And also on all these machines, they have numbers inside here. They're like, you can't see them because they're the same color as that pink colored plastic. Okay, but there, 65. So now I cut myself a tail and we, it, it goes in front of that last needle and I just throw it in. Now we're gonna go on to white, but you know what? I'm looking at this white and this is not gonna be enough for me to crank 70 rounds. So let me grab another ball. And here you can see Brava worsted weight by Knit Picks. Remember that I have a full video tutorial for this on my YouTube channel. I'm not gonna get wild and pull from the inside, so we're just gonna pull the tail from the outside. Okay. And then you just introduce, just like we did when I was um, introducing the other bit of red without the tangles. So, tail to the inside. You know what, I'm gonna put it around this one just so that it has something to grip onto better. All right, and here. And now I'm gonna reset my counter and then I'm gonna crank 70. And the reason I crank five more rows in the white, in the white than I do the red, and I talk about this in my tutorial. Whoa, that felt kind of smooth. I was like, wait, did I lose all my stitches? Nope, I didn't they're all good, um, is because when it's like this, you see how you can see the white here? I do it on purpose so that when this is folded up, I don't get red peaking at the top here. If it was right on the edge and done the same number of rounds as in both colors, you would see the red there. Let me see if I have one. Yep, this is the one that we did first and that's how I determined, oh, I don't like that. So you see how that looks, how I can see the red because it's like the exact same length on both. So instead I started adding five more rounds um, to the white fabric or to the white yarn um, so that it's a little bit longer and when we fold up that brim it accounts for that and now you know what I can feel while cranking here is that although these are the same brand the same worsted weight type of 100% acrylic yarn this cranks a lot smoother like a lot faster on the white because the white I can tell then it's slightly thinner 
look how fast I'm going like it just like the handle is like slipping from my hand quick so just joined does the machine have a number row counter this machine does somebody's asking about the row counter so a round counter in this case and mine does which is super helpful, I mean, because who's going to sit here and count every time that one specifically different colored needle passes them? And I'm not going to sit there and count them rows either, so. Even if my counter ends up dying on me, I'm going to go with whatever that counter <laughs> says. Nah, I won't, but still. You see how quick? I can't wait to get that three printed plastic piece. I'm going to try it on the handle with um, like a power a screwdriver. I've seen people like, Shh, they just like hold it there and the thing cranks by itself. Nisi's Place says, this machine has me itching in anticipation of its purchase. A group of us crochet hats all year for winter distribution to the homeless. This, oh, you will be able to, I mean, I can make this. If I wasn't here running my mouth and I didn't have any issues, which I haven't had with this yarn. This is why I'm like, yo, brava, worsted weight, knit picks, works, smooth, you know, try it before you're over there wasting a ton of money on yarns that you're trying, 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 and it can't, it doesn't, you know, work. Or it's just giving you issues. Because remember, especially being a, like a cheap plastic machine, let's be real, um, it's going to have its little twerks and things that it's not going to like or whatever. So when you can find something that works for it, go with it. I'm over here talking trash about this machine before it <laughs> starts dropping my stitches. Stitches, Let me stop. Um... All right, we're already to 14. So now, if you can probably see here, like the fabric is all the way here down to the table. So what I start to do is when it gets long, I just kind of roll it up on itself. Look how pretty. Oh my gosh, it's super fun. And I knit by hand. So a lot of people are like, oh, knitting by hand is so slow. I feel like all these different crafts have their place. You know, I still love to knit by hand. It's just a different thing. Like when I want to just crank out a quick hat, I'm not just going to be like, oh, let me sit down and pick out special yarn so I can spend all my time working on this thing by hand. It's just like I want to crank out a quick hat. And by hand, that hat like that double layer would take me probably three or four days. And of course, now I'm tangled in with the red yarn because I didn't pick it up from the floor and it got tangled in here. But let me get rid of it. Okay, let me pick that up. Okay, now we're talking loose. Great. So you see how you just pick it up and it kind of sits on itself. Now, every once in a while, I'll also kind of like, and this is just because I worked on my sock knitting machine before this, before I got this machine. And um, I just like to like tug on it, make sure everything is held down in these needles. But look how pretty. So the same way that I showed you how to introduce the white yarn, you could do that if you wanted to make like a striped beanie. If you had scrap pieces of the same type of yarn, I mean, I would just crank a couple rounds and, until it's gone, you know, throw the little tail end, introduce another color. You can make some really fun uh, hats like that. Like different stripe, like scrappy. What a scrappy quilter would call a scrappy hat. <laughs> Use up your scraps for that. All right. And when we're cranking out a bunch at a time, like when we did the other three, I just like crank 20, then my daughter cranks 20, then my son cranks 20, then I crank 20. You know, we go, we grab a snack, we come back, somebody else cranks 20, and we just do them like that. And it's, before you know it, I've already done 21. So I need 70. And yes, Mary Grace says, adding the power adapter equals vroom, vroom. <laughs> I can't wait. Question? So how do you determine how many rows you need to complete the hat is the question I'm getting. That's going to be up to you, right? If you want a slouchier hat, make them longer. If you want them um, for a kid, but just as thick, make them shorter. So that is just going to be like trial and error and personal preference, really. I find that 65 and 70, so 135 rows, works really well for an adult hat and even a kid. My kids are 9 and 11, and these hats fit them perfect, you know, just fine. But still, obviously, with room to grow, so... Um, 135, I think when I did research, I saw that pe most people were saying like 130 to 140 was the length they were using if they're doing this style, right? If you're doing the doubled up because you need the two layers of it. Uh, and I just found that that works well, you know, so you really just got to like play around with it. I'm sure there's patterns out there, probably pattern books, you know, where people have come up with all different kinds of things that you can make with them. 
this is just kind of an introduction. As soon as I made one, I was like, oh, I got to do a tutorial. This is too easy to not share. <laughs> all right, so all this white, I'm going to keep rolling it and kind of tugging on it a little just to make sure and nothing's acting wild. Okay, good. No weird looking stitches yet. And like I said, with this yarn, I have not had a problem yet. And this is one, two, three, four we made. So this is the fifth one of these exact yarns. Keep pulling from my yarn ball. Keep cranking. I'm at 31. Liliana says, I'm literally hand knitting a hat on double pointed needles watching you crank one out in seconds. That's funny. Um, it's different. Like I said earlier, you know, it's just different. Like these little slippers that I made this week took me about, what, four or five nights of knitting a little bit here, a little bit there. But it's still fun. Like I still like to do this versus just cranking out a hat. I mean, and it's still knit. You're still getting the same stockinette type fabric. It looks great. But I see that a lot of people are using this when they're making stuff for the homeless, for giveaways, um, donations, for craft fairs, craft bazaars. A lot of people are putting like their own labels on them, luxury pom-poms on top, you know, and dressing them up a bit. And the way that they're able to sell it for a pretty affordable price is because of the machine. You know, nobody would sell a hat for $25 if you had to hand it. I don't think. I mean, I know I wouldn't. No matter how much I like to hand it. All right. Carrie's asking if I have a video on the sock knitting machine. I don't yet because, like I said, that thing has a huge learning curve. And I don't feel confident enough yet to even share anything. You know, I'll be like, and this is what we're going to do. And then the whole thing will, like, drop 10 stitches. <laughs> and I'll be like, no, I don't really know what I'm doing. So when I get around to, you know, cranking out more socks like the samples I showed a little while ago, um, then, yeah, I'll probably do some. Why not? All right. Michelle says, I tried to learn knitting in the round and I just couldn't get it. So I gave up and went running back to sewing, she says. You know, I, I don't really understand like what the knitting in the round, it's like, I feel like knitting in the round is easier than knitting flat. Because on a flat needle, like my kids can drop the needles, this and that, you know, but when I have them in round needles for them, like to make hats, like my son makes, I mean, he's made probably like five hats, five, six hats at least over the years. He loves circular needles. You have him do anything else and he'd be like, let me get my circulars. <laughs> because they just stay on there. You can scoot them all the stitches right to the middle, you know, to the cord. And they don't go nowhere. Whereas on a straight needle, sometimes my daughter sets it down. And she's younger, but still, like, she'll set it down. She'll pick it up. She'll start, like, on the opposite side. And then some stitches fall off. Or she puts it somewhere and the stitches come off the, the needle. It's just like, you need to put the little tips on them. And you need to pay attention and kind of reorient yourself when you start back to knitting. Like, where is the working yarn coming from? Where do I need to insert my needle? Jennifer's asking, what's the name of the knitting machine? So this one, I mean, if you just look for like a 48 pin knitting machine, in the tutorial that I have for this same Santa hat, I link you to the one that I got. The exact same one, like from the same seller that I got it off Amazon. So you know, like, this is where I got mine. Um... <clears throat> And so that link is there. The brand on mine is Jamit. They come under like the Centro brand, which is this one too. Centro. Some other ones I've seen say Santro. There's different brands, but it's like this. It's the same machine. It's the same machine. 45. Y'all, my counter seems to be working so far. But again, I'm not using this for like commercial hat making. To where you wear it out okay uh jan's cr uh creation says i like loom knitting but i want to try this too it's fun because the loom knitting you know you still have to be in there doing more manual work so if you're going to be hand knitting i feel like hand knitting one extreme and then crank it out the other extreme right this one saves me time so i can spend more time hand knitting other stuff all right Um, so Brenda's asking, she says, you don't worry about the tension when you're switching winders, me, the kids, then back to me. You'd never think of having someone pick up your regular knitting project and start knitting on it. That's absolutely right. So on here, because the tension is set with the tension assembly and what hole it's, we slipped it through, it don't matter who's cranking as long as it's cranking, right? So that's the cool part too. 
I know that happens too. But sometimes like if my son needs me to help him a little bit with his hats, I notice that he's, he hand knits a little bit looser than I. So I'll like jump into it and I'll have to like mindfully be like, okay, just be a little bit looser. So you don't just all of a sudden have his stuff being, and then like my tighter knitting cinches it in. <laughs> So Angela says she clicked on the link and it's not available. When I tell you they are pretty much sold out everywhere, that's what it is. So I would just do a search um, on Amazon. You can check on eBay too. I know a lot of people have been buying them on eBay. Um, and just look, type in 48 pin knitting machine. So if you type in knit, knitting machine and you type in like Centro, Santro or Jamit or whatever the brand, be careful because you might be ordering this little guy, a 22 needle one. Okay. So make sure. And if it says 40, that's a different size than this one. This big one that I'm using here for this exact same hat is 48. So just be mindful of that before you click that add to cart button. So Vivian says, I guess it would be easy to make a ponytail hole at the top. So because when you put them together, you have two holes, um, you, I would probably make the, I wouldn't go with 135 full rows. Like I would make this shorter so that you don't have it you see the slouchiness bit that I have here so that you don't have that for the ponytail. You probably want it to sit closer to your head. So it would probably be less rows and um, you could stitch up the top of the two edges of the two fabrics and leave an opening. I mean, there's, a, there's different ways to do it, but yes, you could do it. Okay. Liz is asking, Vanessa, have you ever heard of a sweater knitting machine? I have. And, and by that, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about like the flat panel knitting ones where you would like knit all the panels for the sweater flat and then you seam them all together. I have heard of that. I have some um, local friends that actually have that. I know some several people that have those machines, but I hear that they're hard to come by and they're quite pricey and you need room for them to, you know. Um, so I've never really looked into that. But see, like that kind of stuff, it's still going to be a ton of work. So I'd rather just hand knit it. Um, but like a hat like this is just like, uh, oh, let's throw it in the machine and crank it up. <laughs> All right. 60. We're almost there, y'all. Let me think of what the next step is before I mess up something. Yeah. So this is where you remember where I showed y'all the, the, um, the tube that I cranked out on my circular sock knitting machine, remember I talked about waste yarn being on each end. So this is scrap yarn, right? The actual yarn that's from that cake is this ombre from red to purple here. And so this is waste yarn also. So this waste yarn is holding all these live stitches together. So because I'm not going to use waste yarn on this, you could, right? Like if I had a scrap piece of another yarn, I would just alternate colors like we did before to go from red to white. Um, and then you would just crank, 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 crank so that you have some yarn holding those live stitches without letting them unravel. Uh, but we are going to, because this is wide, it's big, it's open. I have a darning needle. I'll show you just like I did in the tutorial, how to pick up the live stitches with your darning needle, because I just need to cinch them up at the top to then um, close it up and, and, and make an attach a pom-pom to it. But I'll do the pom-pom part later. I'm getting to the end here. And I know I've been on for almost an hour. This does not take that long. Like I said, I can make one in under 20 minutes if I'm not running my mouth or having tangled problems. Okay, almost there, 67, 68, 69. And see what I noticed is, remember that I started cranking early on and I went like a few needles past and then I was like, oh, let me reset the timer. Because I reset it right where it was, it's not counting the rows like exactly to the beginning of the round. So I'm just gonna, Finish 70 and go to the, uh, see where that white needle is. See, like right there it says 70, but 70 is actually right here. There's my white needle. That tells me it's my 48th needle. Um, I'm going to leave myself a longer tail here. Take it out. I'm going to just put this thread tail in the center. Then I'm going to crank one round with nothing. Okay. And you got to stop. Like literally I'm watching the white needle, right? It's here. So don't crank it till it comes all the way to the front because by then the stitches will have dropped. So now I'm going to thread the tail end through my darning needle and I'm going to start picking up my stitches. So this is 48. It's already in through there. So we'll start off at needle one 
and I'm picking them up from the inside of the machine, scooping it up and pulling this through. And I'll do like four or five like this, and then I will crank the handle to advance these stitches. So you see how now we're off of the machine? Don't mess with this too much because if you slip it, these are all live stitches. So I'm just gonna crank a little, little, little right there and stop. So don't crank all the way to where the next one you need to grab is in the front. You gotta leave it there. If it comes all the way here, these stitches will have dropped. So this is the part where you just kinda have to pay a little bit of attention and it just takes like a minute to do. So I'll grab all these. Ooh, don't get tangled on that. Crank a bit again. Ooh, right there. You see how it started to fall off? Let me make sure I grab all of it instead of splitting it. And then you'll just pick every one of these needles up. I'm on 13, or every one of the live stitches that are on the needles up. And you can see how now the project is obviously coming off. But like, do not mess with this. Don't let a kid lift this up. Like if I just lift it, it will pop off of all of these because they're all live, meaning loose stitches and there's no yarn to grab them. We have to do it manually. Question? Okay. So this is good because that way y'all can see, those of you that are asking Santa for one of these machines for, for the holidays now, um, you can see in real time it's fun. It's super fun. And again, like a great scrap buster. Just be mindful of the yarn that you're using. Like play around with maybe like a DK weight three yarn and the worsted weight four. Like I said, this nitpicks Brava. You saw it right here live. No issues. And like I said, this is the fifth one we've made with um, the red and white Brava yarn. And I looked up the colorways on the yarn in case people were interested in making the same hats. Um, it's literally red and white. There was like <laughs> no special name to it. So, but I mean, so quick and so fun. All right, so I'm going to grab the last couple ones. I have like 10 more stitches to pick up here. Um, Audrey's asking, hey, Audrey. <laughs> I'm like hitting myself in the face saying hi. That's how excited I am. Uh, Audrey's asking if I've made any flat panels on this machine. I have not yet. Mm -mm. It's one of those things about like if I'm going to be making something flat, I'd rather just hand knit it. But I, I'm going to try it, you know, and see if maybe there's some cool things like the, the um, scarves and stuff like that for the kids to make. They would love that. My daughter especially because she hates knitting. She's like, it's so slow. I'm like, keep knitting. <laughs> No, my son likes it more than her. That's why he's made more projects than her. She's probably like halfway through three scarves or something. Okay, so I just, um, I don't know why I cinched that in, but anyways, you can cinch it in. Let's unroll the whole fabric tube here. Okay. I'm going to cinch it up on that end. You can see how the white is longer. Just give it a stretch and kind of even things out. Once it comes off of the machine, it might look like a little off, but once it rests for a little bit, it'll be fine. Okay, not bad. Then I'm gonna cinch up the other end. And you know what, I should have weave, weaved in these ends, but I'm just gonna pretend. I'm gonna weave them in after, but I just wanna show you all how it um, comes together. And you insert the, the white inside the red for the, the double thickness layer of the hat. So the same way that we had that uh, tail end on the red when we cast on, remember we start off with a tail, throw it in, and then cast on. That's the tail that I'm cinching up here. And this is the tail that I cinched up here. And I'm just gonna show you. So you just have one long tube and then you just feed one into the other for the lining. And then I would take this tail end and feed it through here, tie them up, you know, once I weave in all the ends, but I'll go back and do that. But you can see that is the hat. Oop, that is not the hat. Pull out the white, because the white is definitely longer, so don't just stuff it in there. This takes a little bit, like, just work it out so that the opening of the white is matched up with the opening of the red. And that's how it should be. Remember, the white is longer than the red. There we go. And then when we fold it up. There is Santa hat number four. Now we can see about taking some holiday pictures out here, because we definitely don't have snow in Florida, but at least in my part of Florida. But um, 
I'm going to make a pom-pom, finish this hat off, and see uh, if we can put on these cute hats. This is a, th a woven in tail that's sticking out there. But look how cute. Super fun. These, I can see these done in so many different yarns. I just did a Santa hat because it's that time of year. But I think it's super fun, uh, a project to make with kids, to sell them, to wear them. I mean, super fun, very festive, and I really enjoyed making it. So uh, let me pop in here and see what kind of questions we have. If you want to go to the regular face camera. <clears throat> let me see. Patty B says, love seeing the rapid work, instant gratification. That is absolutely what this is. I wrote that in my email that I sent out today. I'm like, instant gratification. Look at that. Three hats. This would take you weeks, um, days weeks if you hand knit it two layers though you know because it's not just one layer um okay so carla's asking a great question how many skeins for one hat including the pom-pom so one skein of red and one skein of white is enough for me at least to do one full hat with the red outside the slightly longer rounds of white and the pom-pom from one skein your pom-pom might not be super puffy but you have enough to make it and you can you can kind of adjust it a little bit too like instead of 65 red and 70 white you could do like 62 red and 67 white you know and that will save you a little bit more of the white for the pom-pom but yes i have been able to crank it out like what i started using today was leftovers from another hat so you see that i still had okay okay let's see what else great question Heather says, don't forget to like the video, everybody. That's right. Give it a thumbs up. Share it. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and share this video, um, especially for this time of year. So some of your crafty friends can see what types of projects. This is cool because it's not like, oh, I won't have time to make it, right? This is like you can order the supplies today and definitely be making this by next week at the latest. Because I ordered from Knit Picks recently and I got the stuff super quick. Restocked up on some yarn. Can never have too much yarn. All right. Bye, Audrey. She says, I have to go back to work. Have a great week, everybody. Great. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and log off as well. I'm going to finish making the pom-pom for this. And then I will see you all here again on Friday. We have a flash sale Friday that we're planning for y'all. So definitely tune back right here on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you can check out all my video tutorials for the different stuff I talked about today. The fleece hat, the fleece hat with the fringe pom-pom and the machine embroidered design on the front, my Santa hat, all these things. I have tutorials for them on my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos I post. And follow me on Instagram, Crafty Gemini. I'm also on TikTok now. You can see we did a fun TikTok, the kids and I making one of these Santa hats. So that's there. And on TikTok, I am the Crafty Gemini. And I'll see y'all on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern here for a flash sale Friday. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye.